Hello, good morning, welcome. May 20th, it's Friday. We're closing out the week by reading 1 John. We're in chapter five. I hope you've been reading along. By the way, I've been uh, thinking about when we're done with chapter five, what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna announce that next week to you so you can start reading and preparing. We're gonna have a, a good time uh, in the Word of God. We're gonna continue. So um, we're reading in First John and uh, we're in verse nine. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it's the testimony of God which he has given about his son. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Remember, the water, the blood, and the Spirit. Whoever does not believe God has made them out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. Listen again closely. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts the testimony that God has about his Son. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. Why would you make God out to be a liar? Because you haven't believed the testimony God has given about his son. So now we see that John is telling us, inspired by the Holy Spirit, when you don't believe in Jesus, you're calling God a liar. Why? Because God has said, Jesus is my son and the savior of the world. Notice how God removes a halfway position. You're either all in or you're not in. Either Jesus is the son of God or God is a liar and God can't lie because he's God. And if we have a lying God, like the Greeks had gods, they had thousands of them, but some were liars, some were immoral. Yuck. Imagine have a God who would lie to you. You wouldn't even know if you could depend on him. So John is saying, if you don't believe in Jesus and what God has said about him, it's not just that you don't believe in Jesus, you don't believe in God who has given testimony. It's like in a courtroom. You know, Barbara's up on a charge. So Barbara says, no, I was in New York when that crime happened in Texas. All right, now do you believe Barbara or not? Now someone says, no, I was with her in New York. Okay, so now if you don't believe Barbara was in New York, you don't, not only don't believe her, you don't believe the one who just gave testimony about it. That's what God is saying here. So it's not that I can't believe, no, I choose not to believe, and by choosing not to believe, I call God a liar, but that goes further. So God's word is truth, and he says, believe these truths. I love you. I give you these promises. I give you these commands. This is what's wrong. This is what's right. This is what I'll do if you trust me. So when we make up our own religion or we don't trust in God or we don't believe that what God says is true, John is making it more stark for all of us. He says, you're calling God a liar. In the day of trouble, call upon me, and I will answer you. Day of trouble comes. I'm not calling, I'm not calling on God. I gotta do something that has meaning. You know, prayer, that's fantasy. That's like melodramatic drivel. That's emotionalism. I gotta figure things out, even though I'm in trouble. What we're saying is, God, you're a liar. If I call, you won't answer. See what unbelief does? Unbelief calls God a liar. And we've all done that, starting with moi, with me. I failed to believe God. I never realized what I was really doing is calling God a liar. Because we're so self-centered, we make ourselves this weak victim. I can't believe. <laughs> I'm dealing with that for decades, uh, not only counseling with people, but uh, see it in my own life. No, we choose not to believe. Who would stop you from believing? Satan would try to, to
discourage you, give other suggestions. That's why we need to encourage each other so we don't have the terrible sin of unbelief. Unbelief says God is a liar, not just about on the third day he rose from the dead. I don't, I don't believe that. Well, then God is a liar. I believe this world just came about. One amoeba looked at another protoplasm and said, yo, what's up? And then the world came. Well, who made the amoeba and whatever? Oh, I don't know. Well, then what you're doing is calling God a liar when he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Oh, it's very stark. You know, truth is like that. Something's true or not. So now we know that not only those basic cardinal doctrines, but how about these other things? Uh, don't be afraid, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But we persist in living in fear. But God said he would never leave us nor forsake us. You know, Pastor, I'm so worried because I have this fear about tomorrow. Demonic things are happening. I heard this, I saw this guy on the internet. He says that he had a revelation that my, uh, America is going to be, caterpillars are gonna descend and march through the land and we're gonna be destroyed. That's what's gonna follow us now. No, but God said, surely goodness and mercy will follow us. No matter what happens in the world, whatever judgment comes, goodness and mercy are following us. So there's, there's the choice. Is God telling the truth? Is he gonna take care of us or is he not? Notice in Hebrews 11, the great chapter of the heroes of faith. You know what all the Old Testament saints were commended for? Perfect lives? No. Perfect righteousness? No their faith. They believed, even though they struggled sometimes. For the most part, they believed what God said. They rested in God. They trusted God. They did wonders through faith that God word, God's word is true. Come on, we can do that today. Is there some area of your life where you just know there's a promise of, how about this? Stop worrying about finances. My God is able to supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Either true or not true. If we don't trust that word, we call God a liar. He's not a liar. He's going to help you today. Have a great one. Amen. Amen.